We're back. This is Tina and Friends. I'm Tina Trenner. Pat Cassell and now Larry Harrison is joining us because we're going to talk about this disaster called the insurance bill. Uh, they passed it no matter how much screaming, hollering. And when you really know when you are not being represented in a representative government, when 62% of the country says absolutely not, 10% are such idiots they don't know. So only about 20-some percent really wanted this. And you got it anyway. You got it anyway. So let's talk about it, guys. What did we get? I mean, I know what we got, but, you know, keep it clean. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the parts that are going to be implemented early on between now and the end of the year, let's say, are nice things. Uh, there are some... Kitchy, kitchy, kitchy. Can it make For you instance, feel good? There's going to be, it's mandated that we must have a high risk pool. Now, I've been advocating, the National Association of Health Underwriters has been advocating high risk pools around the country for years. 32 states have high risk pools. They're basically a safety net for people that have found themselves uninsured, uninsurable. And so through these uh, pools, they get guaranteed issue insurance. And it's a nice thing. Nevada does not have one. Arizona does not have one. We're the only two states west of the Mississippi that do not have high-risk pools. Had it been mandated that, or just by happenstance, that all other states, that all states have a high-risk pool, we wouldn't be talking about health care. Well, why didn't the insurance companies do that before this happened? Why didn't the insurance companies go, this is what would fix this, let's do this? Well, it wasn't just the insurance companies that were about it. It was a, about a funding mechanism. So it was all state-specific, and each state had to come up with a funding mechanism. Most of the high-risk pools were funded through uh, tobacco tax. When the tobacco companies were fined billions of dollars, they used that money to establish a high-risk pool. I didn't know about high-risk pools at that time. I found out about them about later and all of the tobacco money had been allocated for education and uh, for roads. So that's where the lion's share of Nevada's uh, high risk or Well I know now they're saying the, the way it's set up right now with this whole thing and that's one of the reasons that Gibbons is suing because it's going to cost this state that's already on the verge of bankruptcy 600 million dollars to fund this, right? Well, you're, you're talking about funding some of the uh, Medicare, Medicaid, yeah, and some yeah. of those other aspects of it. There is uh, $5 billion that's allocated from the federal government to establish for states that don't have high-risk pools and then for those states that do have them to augment what their uh, needs might be. $5 billion. Where are they getting it? Oh, they're going to print oh, that. They're going to make oh, that. That's Obama's it. little printing machine underneath, print underneath the White right House. Out there, got that's that green ink. And, you know. But the reality is this, you know, when Larry talks about it, Larry, how, how did Kentucky make out when they had that uh, high-risk pool? It's interesting. Uh, Kentucky funded theirs with tobacco money. After all, they're a tobacco state. Um, they had a really nice plan design with an unlimited lifetime benefit. And within a matter of a year or three, the whole thing collapsed because of a very small number of people, well under 100 collapsed the whole system. Under 100? Under 100. 100 people collapsed the How'd system. How'd they do that? <clears throat> well, through um, uh, medications, through therapies, through uh, dialysis. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, people in the surrounding states immediately went to Kentucky, and then they were able to uh, glom onto it. Now, you know, California has a, a high-risk pool, but they have a limit of $75,000 a year. In order for each person, and then they have a lifetime maximum as well. Well, I have to tell you, unlimited is too high, seventy-five thousand is too low because there are people that, you know, in the third quarter of the year, have already blown through. Imagine, 5, yeah. I would, if they're really sick. Okay, mm -hmm. here's what I want to just say. You know, we live in reality, but we're talking about fantasy. If your heart's as good as gold and you're the kindest human being on the planet, which I don't think politicians are, but that's just my opinion, you cannot take care of everybody. You can't do it. 
And my mother used to say to me when I used to ask for things, she'd say, the world does not owe you a living. Take care of yourself. Oh, what a concept. So where are we, Pat, with this? I mean, think this. How, 100 people can collapse the system? You know, first of all, let, let's, just, let's just cut to the chase. Let, let's just assume that we put together this plan by July 1st, by the way, has to be in place. And let's say the state of Nevada allows some people to get together and create a plan. Well, there's going to be a premium base, and you're going to get, they're, going to get, they're going to be given a standard rate. That standard rate w in our business is the preferred rate for, for what their illness is. What it's going to do is it's going to drive all the rates across the board way up. Uh, I think I told you earlier, I just talked to a gentleman like last week and gave him a quote of $77 a month for health insurance on a, on a $1,500 deductible plan. The sad part about it is when this thing actually kicks in, I would say, and Larry, correct me if I'm wrong, in about 18 months, maybe maybe less or maybe two years, that same $77 rate becomes about $225. Did you tell him that? No, I, 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 that was that was... That was what I was saying last week. I mean, I'm just telling the you asked for a price today. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is that's where it's going to go. And the other thing about this health bill, they, they're talking about fining you for a Cadillac plan. But nowhere in the bill did they describe what the Cadillac plan is. They just they say we're gonna it's a forty percent excise tax. If an individual's premium exceeds ten thousand two hundred dollars or a family exceeds exceeds twenty seven five in two thousand and eighteen. But here's the problem. If we're right, and God forbid we are, that's really where the rates could be in 2018. Because we went to a function held by the life underwriters, and that, that, that gentleman that spoke said that's where the premiums were going to hit, hit. So imagine that you are paying $27,000 a year for health insurance, and you could get it with a 40% tax. And oh, by the way, they're going to make you disclose, I think starting next year, on W-2s, what you pay for premium for your employees. Isn't this fun? Don't you feel just all warm and fuzzy? I mean, this is change you can believe in. We are so screwed, we're almost out of time. And if we weren't out of time, we would go ahead and let you say that, Larry. But we're going to take a break, and Larry's going to get to say it when we come back. So just stay right there. Be back in just a minute. Promise.